Okay. I'm Aaron. You can call me the code boss. And that's what I get. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about type introspection and reflection in Ruby. Did not misspell anything. Type introspection. Um, has anyone heard of these or is familiar? I'm not going to ask questions, so feel free to raise your hand if you've heard of them. Good, good. No one knows. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I was talking about. Um, <laughs> I will, and I will, and some, uh, later on I will kind of get people interactive asking questions. I'll let you know beforehand, um, but for now, if you raise your hand, don't worry, I'm not going to call on you. I know that, I know that always makes me feel better thinking I'm not going to get called on. Um, okay, so let's get into it. Um, Tooling-wise, I'm using IPython for a Ruby talk. That's, that's how I roll. Um, also, feel free to ask questions at any, at any point in time. I'm actually terrible at answering questions, um, and I have a history of getting into some banter with games. Which, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so far, 100% of the time, he's won. <laughs> so, so if he asks a question, I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just not going to respond. <laughs> okay, so type introspection. Um, I, I will ask a question. Does anyone, um, I kind of asked this earlier, but does anyone have an idea of type introspection I would like to throw out a potential definition? It's a, it's a, it's a software engineering concept that's not specific to Ruby. Go ahead, Ryan. Finding out what... Uh, Methods and properties a class or an object might offer. Yes, you get a virtual candy bar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much what Ryan just said. Uh, the ability to program to examine the type or properties of an object at runtime. Um, I'm going to zone in on the word object for a second. Um, type introspection is not necessarily limited to object oriented programming. Um, there's no hard definition that says it has to be, even though we use the term object, but you don't see it very much in functional programming as well as other paradigms. You do see it in uh, object-oriented programming in both class-based object-oriented languages like Java and C-sharp and uh, prototypical ones too, like JavaScript. So we'll get into that. So before I talk about type introspection in Ruby, um, one more time, let me just go over the definition. It's the ability of a program to examine the type or properties of an object at runtime. That might sound like gibberish, something you might not want to do, but these are things like, I have an object. What's the class of this object? Um, is this class also, you know, the grand, uh, you know, a grandchild of this other type of class. Um, what methods can I call on this object? Things that you do actually care about. So in Java, um, and hint, hint, Ruby is going to be um, very powerful in type introspection. So with Java, an example of this is a. Uh, I just want to go through some languages to show you that it's you can use it with a lot of different languages. In Java, it's something like this. You know, we have an object instantiated by class person. We want to ask if this object is an instance of person. Something like that. This is an example of type introspection. Um, I'm not going to run this because person's not defined. <coughs> It'll error and I'll look dumb. Uh, PHP, exact same way. Um, we use the instance of method to figure out if object is an instance of person. Just type introspection. So if you see something like this, something where you're asking an object a question, that's type introspection. Python, I'm actually using Python and IPython. That's kind of cool. I actually can run this. So I will run this. This is an example of type introspection in Python. Don't worry, we're getting to Ruby. Um, in Python, you can use the dir method to basically simulate Ruby's dot method, dot method to figure out all the methods. So this is, you know, that. So you can, I'm sure you can do this in Java and PHP. Um, maybe, I can't verify that, but I'd imagine you can. Um, Python makes it easy with dir. And then you can also, another way you can kind of use type introspection is if you want to spit out. Oh, it's down there. You can also figure out just the type. So that's, that's the actual type of object. This is the class foo. Let's go on with the fun stuff. So, type introspection in Ruby. You can do everything we've seen so far, but you can do other things too. So, I have an example right here. Uh, we've got class A and B. Uh, if you guys, if you were here for uh, the meta program I talked about a little bit, bit uh, a couple months ago, this might look familiar to you. This is a way you can define a class in Ruby. That's not the conventional way. This is um, you, know, you call class.new. If you remember from that talk, if you were there, a class that you define in Ruby is actually an object of class class. <laughs> um, so this makes sense. You're instantiating an object of class class to create a class. So basically, we're defining a class A. We're defining a class B, which inherits from class A. Hence the argument. We declare two objects A and B out of respective classes A and B. Um, so now we're going to play. We're going to play a game right now. This is where we get that interactiveness going on. Uh, we're going to play a game called the Pardon my French. The Oh Crap Game. That my this is a game my high school teacher, my high school English teacher, played with us in my English class. Which is basically, I'm going to ask a question, half the class, and I'm going to, it's got two answers, half the class, you know, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to ask you, um, you raise your hand, which one you think it is, and then when I say the answer, you basically just have a silence, you know, 
Oh crap, you're something. <laughs> so, first one. Given this stuff right here, um, is A an instance, it, is object A an instance of class A? Yes? Yes. Yes. No? We're right. Good job, guys. Okay. Is B an instance? Object B. Is that an instance of class A? Yes. Yes. No. No. Pow. Oh. Oh crap. So you guys did that. <laughs> so now, now don't 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 think about your premonitions right now. We know that B class B inherits from class A. This is just an example of kind of how this method instance of works. So right now we can tell that instance of looks directly at your direct parent class. It's not following an ancestry chain. Let's keep going with this. I'm going to comment these just so they don't have to get in the way. Um, is, uh, is object B going to be a kind of class A? So this is similar. So we got yes? No? OK. Yeah, everyone was right. So kind of works. Now let's keep going down the list. And I just wanted to, mainly I just want to show examples of type introspection. These are questions that you can ask any of your objects to kind of figure out your relationships here. I forgot to ask that one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. 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 Uh, okay, so this is, so, well, this, well, dang it, no, that was going to be a fun one. Um, but but we, can, we can see here, uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the ancestry chain too much because it doesn't fall into this, but we can see here that class A is actually an instance of class, class. So, well, a, a, well, class A is a class, it's also an object. Like I said. <coughs> All right. Um, let's keep going. There's a couple more ways you can use type introspection in Ruby, and there's you know one way I have I'm not going to address is just the dot method. You know, on any object you can call object dot methods to find all your list of methods. Um, there's a ton of different ways to go to type introspection. I just wanted to show this is what it is. So you can use the word, the phrase type introspection. It sounds smart to your coworkers and get a raise. To your boss. <laughs> we throw some type introspection in this project. It'll work. Um, okay. So same examples up here. Uh, I'm not going to. We're not going to. We'll the game with this one just because there's a lot of different answers we can throw out. But we're going to put uh, object A's class and then object A's class. Yep, yeah, class. And then you have, you, even with classes, you can kind of use um, comparators like this. Um, I have never used this. I imagine it's just you can use these benefits to, you can use those uh, operators to show inheritance kind of direction. Um, I, I would recommend not using that. Um, but James, feel free to throw me down. <laughs> if I'm wrong. Um, so we can, we can see nothing 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 super new here, and that's type introspection. So just to review, we're going to review this again at the end. Type introspection is um, it's, it's it's language agnostic. It's just a concept where if you have an object and you want to ask it questions, you're just inspecting kind of additional attributes of that object. What method is going to call? Um, what's its relationship to classes? Things like that. Um, you're not doing anything. You're not modifying any data. We modify potential data at runtime is where you have reflection. So before I get deeper into that definition, is anyone is anyone familiar with reflection? And if so, would they like to throw out a definition, a potential definition? Okay. Um, spotlight's on. Reflection is the, basically what it just says, the ability to modify a program at runtime. Um, that, that, that's, that's the key thing, big word on modify. Uh, you can still examine everything, um, but modify, like you modify your program at runtime. Um, that's reflection. And we kind of, again, if you were here for the meta programming talk I gave a little bit, we talked a little bit about reflection there. I didn't zone in on it very much then, so I want to zone in on it more here and say this is what reflection is. So, like I did with type introspection, I'm not going to start off right with Ruby. I want to show examples of how you do this with, Java, with uh, other languages. So we'll do JavaScript, because JavaScript. <coughs> Jesse, feel free to throw me down here too. <laughs> I just cheered for you. Cool. Um, so, uh, actually, I can't run this. By the way, when I remove that word capture, that just, that just hides out. But, so, when I remove it, it doesn't mean I'm going to show up. But I'm not going to run this little error because we don't have um, function foo um, created anywhere. But let's say we wanted to do this. I think, you know, basically we're just kind of calling a hello method on, on an object. Um, in JavaScript, the way we could do this, we could do something similar to this. Just, you know, assuming foo is a function, a constructor function. We can just say new foo and call dot hello on it. That's you know we just call the hello method. That's no reflection. Very nice and pretty. Very easily read readable. Now let's get into the dirty stuff. This kind of follows similar um, similar idea in metaprogramming that it gets dirty if you use it a lot. So be sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. 
So if we wanted to use reflection to kind of do this, uh, we would never do it for this example, but to use an, use an example of how you would do it, you would say new this foo, so we're accessing the foo uh, function constructor via a string here, which ends up pulling in that constant, and then we're calling hello via string as well, which is basically, which is translating this into an actual function call to hello. With the reflection, um, with the, a lot of reflection, the, the kind of the power behind it is being able to use strings that end up translating into constants. Um, again, it's up to you how you want to use it, but this is not, you know, it's not root, this is not specific to Ruby, JavaScript, it's, uh, it's you know, a lot of programming languages use this stuff. Mostly, mostly dynamic programming languages, static languages like Java and C++, actually I don't, I don't think C++ has reflection, um, but Java and C Sharp, you know, they certainly have reflection, but as far as when you build a language, it's more difficult to build it in. Um, moving on down, we have our favorite eval statements. I'm going to get into these a little bit and here in a couple of minutes. Um, but you can use an eval statement to do this exact same thing. Eval statements are also language agnostic. Most languages have them built in, most higher level languages, I should say. And they're powerful and dangerous. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that. But basically, kind of similar how we use strings with reflection up here, we're kind of working with how the language works up here with eval statements. And both of these right here, we're just basically using strings and just evaluating that. So I'm going to spend time on this bottom one. We just have the exact same string we have up here, and we're just evaluating it as in string format. Anything you have in an eval block has a, you know, eval usually, usually evals just accept one argument. It's usually a string argument. Anything in that eval block will, in that eval call, will just get evaluated as that language, as actual language syntax. Powerful, but you can imagine this kind of getting abused. So Java, Similar stuff. Um, again, without reflection, we're doing the same thing. We're, we're just creating an object out of the class foo, calling hello. With reflection, now these are two different ways you can do this. This is not all one block, but you can see this gets this gets dirty. Um, it's powerful, but dirty. So here we're basically creating an object of foo, an object foo. We're finding the class based on foo right here. So this is a string. We're creating that object. Um, and then, you know, here down here, we're kind of doing the same thing. We're actually invoking a method that I should have named that hello. Or no, not <coughs> correct. We're calling the method here. Oh, or we're finding the method here, hello. And then we're invoking that method on object two. So, dirty. You can do it with reflection. Um, you know, there's certainly use cases for this. Moving on to Python. Um, it's a little bit cleaner. Um, same idea, you know, we're just creating an object calling hello. Here in Python, we use. Um, the globe, I, I don't know Python very well, so I'll probably, I don't know what the globals is right there. I'm assuming it's just a, a function call right there. But this is how we would do it in uh, Python. We've got our eval statement here, too. And then in Ruby, <coughs> this is kind of where I want to focus on. To use reflection in Ruby, um, usually you're going to use the send method. Every Send is a method on object. Um, most things in Ruby are objects, and that's kind of... That's part of why reflection is so nice, and especially type introspection is so powerful in Ruby. It's just because everything is an object. You even saw classes are objects. That's, that, 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 you know, that's, that might be confusing to think about, but it lends itself to some powerful topics, especially here. So in Ruby's do reflection, um, one, here, we're getting the constant foo by class name, which is a string right here. It's just a string. Um, so this is how we're actually accessing our constant, and we're declaring a new object out of that.
eval and instance exec methods come in on this? Um, so that might that would be considered. I think that would fall under reflection as well, um, because you're, whenever you use a, I use I use class eval more than instance eval and change. Feel free to feel free to jump in on this too, because um, I've added instance eval. Um, but class eval, um, I would yeah, you're modifying a class at runtime, so I would I would consider that a part of reflection. Does that does that answer anything? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks, <laughs> Awesome.